one, ignition, and liftoff. Go SpaceX, go IM-1, and the Odysseus lunar lander. Vehicle pitching downrange. Stage one propulsion is nominal. So NASA is taking a second shot at a soft landing on the moon in the 21st century, this time utilizing SpaceX and intuitive machines. And thus far, everything is going extremely well. After a flawless liftoff, after a flawless deployment of the payload, the Odysseus lander, well, everything else seems to be going as planned. Up to this point, they're going through a process called autonomous commissioning. Actually, that process is now complete, where the vehicle controls its spin rate in orbit, utilizing special cameras known as star trackers, which autonomously match images of the distant star field and provide the Odysseus with its orientation. Software on board then takes the star tracker measurements and processes them through an algorithm known as the Kalman filter to correct the onboard orientation and then to estimate and reject bad measurements. Once this system has autonomously determined its attitude relative to the star field, it then utilized a reference position from the nominal launch vector to determine the approximate location of the sun. And this, of course, is incredibly important to do right off the bat because these types of probes don't have a hell of a lot of battery power. They need to get their solar panels oriented towards the sun as rapidly as possible, which this probe has apparently been able to do. Then Odysseus will hold this approximate attitude within approximately plus or minus 15 degrees for the entire mission, other than when flight controllers in Nova Control, which is what Intuitive Machines calls their mission control center in Houston, Texas, manages the lander's thermal state on the vehicle by keeping other systems in the shade of the top deck and the side deck of the solar arrays and out of the sun. So you want the solar panels in the sun gobbling up energy. You want to keep everything else from being bombarded by solar energy if you can do that. Each step in this commissioning process is expected to happen autonomously because flight controllers in Houston do not yet have communications with Odysseus. Although now they do, so all of this process has apparently been completed without any flaws whatsoever. So now that maximum power has been established, Odysseus has turned on its communications radios and made first contact with the flight controllers at Nova Control. So the fact that this vehicle has successfully made contact with Nova Control indicates that steps one, two, and three of the IM-1 success criteria have now been taken care of. The launch, the launch vehicle separation, and the autonomy commissioning. By the way, there's 16 steps on this list. The next step, and possibly the most important, is the engine commissioning. Even though the maneuvering thrusters definitely work okay, or at least they appear to, this vehicle is equipped with a powerful Methalox engine that's going to drive it out to the moon. Now this is a more aggressive process than what Astrobotic had planned, which was to utilize gravity for the most part in a series of orbital transfers to get them out to the moon over the course of about a month or perhaps a little bit longer, whereas Intuitive Machines is only going to take about a week. Now, there are multiple steps to performing this main engine burn when it happens. The first is to flow cryogenic methane and oxygen down the lander's feed lines to the engine to condition the propulsion system temperature, which is called chilling at the engines. The prop department in the Mission Control Center monitors several automated valve and temperature readings in this process to ensure that everything is progressing within the expected parameter ranges. And the onboard systems are monitoring the time of ignition for this commissioning burn to begin. A few seconds before this happens, the RCS system, the maneuvering thrusters, fire the jets to settle their tanks, liquid methane and oxygen in place. 
to make sure that we don't have any problems in feeding the fuel, any sort of fuel bubbles, that sort of thing. Engine slosh, which was a big problem for Starship when it was lifting off. And then after that, the main engine igniter comes on, much like a pilot light in a gas oven, to ignite the methane and the oxygen, which have been mixed in the combustion chamber by a carefully orchestrated opening of main throttle valves which means hopefully all these valves function properly, which is one of the big problems that Astrobotic ran into. The engine startup sequence is something that Intuitive Machines has apparently tested thousands of times to validate safety and reliability. Now, of course, that's something that Astrobotic also did, and it didn't help. So let's just hope that all of this goes smoothly. During this process, the vehicle will be holding a constant attitude by adjusting the angles of the main engine inside a two-axis gimbal ring designed by the Intuitive Machines team. This is not an engine that they bought from somebody else. This is an engine that they built pretty much on their own. This automated system also throttles the main engine to give the team data to make necessary adjustments across the engine's power range. And at the same time, Odysseus will be continuing to coast towards the moon. And after that process is complete, well, there's a whole lot of other maneuvers that they're going to have to be carrying out. That's only step four. They're going to have to carry out some trajectory correction maneuvers, and then maneuver to lunar orbit insertion attitude, and then finally lunar orbit insertion, and then achieving low lunar orbit. And that's still only halfway through the process. There's a lot of things that Intuitive Machines has in front of them. And there's going to be a lot of nervous people, both at this company and at NASA. I'm going to keep you guys up to date on everything that's taking place. If you'd like to watch a much more in-depth video about all the details of this mission, including the payloads that this vehicle is carrying, well, I have a link for you at the end of this video, so keep your eyes open for that. Please like please subscribe. It's very important to the future of my channel. Also, please consider supporting me on Patreon. All the details are in the description. Picked up a couple of new members since yesterday, so very grateful for that. And some of these folks have actually provided me with testimonials as to why they decided to support me in the first place. One named Christian Cameron said this, Hi, I've been with you since July of 2020. Wow, a long time. $10 a month. You are the only one to whom I give on Patreon. The reason is simple. It was the first time I had heard someone daring to say some harsh and original things about space on YouTube. I thought you were someone to encourage, and I decided to follow you. And I'll tell you something, Christian. It's people like you that help me keep this content going, help me keep my head above water, especially when Google starts cutting back on the ad revenue. Thank you very much to you and to everybody, including the folks who just watch every day, because you help keep my head above water too. So until next time, guys, I urge all of you to stay angry about space.